Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. As followers of Jesus, we're called like him to proclaim the good news of God. But it's hard, I think. Hard to know where to start. Hard to know what words and actions to use. Hard to imagine that people are going to want to listen. And so I'm struck by the order of events in this passage. Before Jesus began to proclaim the good news of God, God first proclaimed the good news to Jesus. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. It matters, I think, that the Father's proclamation came first. That Jesus knew the good news himself before proclaiming it to others. Today's Gospel reading is paired with a passage from Genesis 9, which contains God's words to Noah after the subsiding of the great flood. As for me, says God, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you. Here, in the first mention of covenant in the Bible, we hear God establish a covenant that puts no demands on us nor on any other species of creation. It's a one-sided proclamation made by God alone. It's an expression of God's love for God's creation that doesn't depend on our response. It's not a transaction or a deal. It's not something we have to earn. When God put a rainbow in the sky after the flood, God proclaimed that God will always love us, irrespective of whatever we do or don't do. In that covenant, before anything is asked of us, God proclaims that we are beloved children of God. Now at the beginning of Lent, we look forward to Good Friday and to Easter. And in the events of those days, we will know again that God loves us. Jesus gave up his life out of love for us and for all creation. We do not earn this love. It comes simply because God is love. This is the good news that is proclaimed by the cross and by the empty tomb. So as we consider proclaiming the good news of God, we do it knowing that first God proclaims God's good news for us. <laughs>